Next, we're going to talk about an important concept on the frame forwarding for the switch. In there are two methods that we will cover in this course. The first method is known as store and forward switching and the second method is known as cut through switching. Let's take a look at how store and forward switching works. For store and forward switch, it will receive the entire frame and computes the CRC. So CRC stands for Cyclic Redundancy Check. Another name for CRC is called check sum. This is used to check for the validity of the data sent. If the CRC is valid, the switch will refer to the destination address and try to forward the frame to the correct port. This is a simple analogy of how the store and forward switching works. Let's assuming the frames are like buses queuing to take passengers in a bus terminal. The frame number one is a bus right in front and it is half filled so at this point in time for the case of store and forward switching it will wait for all the passenger to board the bus or frame number one before frame number one is processed if frame number one is not fully filled the bus or the frame number one will wait until all the information is in before it will continue to process it. Here is a graphical diagram of the data format for the switch in the store and forward switching mode. The frame works with a frame header and data followed by a FCS checksum. The checksum is used for the calculation of the validity of the data so if the data or information is corrupted the CRC will reflect the data corruption so that the switch can ask for a resend of the frame again we have covered the store and forward method of the frame forwarding so let's take a look at the cut through method the cut through switch basically will forward the frame before the entire frame is received which means at the minimum the frame will be sent when only the destination address is available it does not need to wait for the whole frame before forwarding the frame let's take a look at the graphical explanation of this using the same example earlier the cut through switching works just like the buses in the bus interchange when the people are trying to board the bus the bus is half filled but as long as the destination address is known the bus or the frame one knows where to go it does not wait for the full frame to be filled and it will continue to fill go on so that the next frame number two will continue to fill in the next frame data and this is the data format for the cut through switching in this case, it is similar to the storm forward method with a frame header, data, and a FCS checksum. For cut through switching, it does not wait for the rest of the information to be available. As long as the destination MAC address is available, it will begin to forward the frame to the destination.
looking at this, we are able to compare the advantages and disadvantages for store and forward switching. So for store and forward, the advantages are it allows the switch to check for errors using the FCS checksum before transmitting the frame to the destination. It is also able to perform automatic buffering which means which if the information flows too quickly it will be able to slow down the information and conversely if the information is too fast it will be able to slow down the information however the disadvantage is it is generally slower than the cut through switching because of all these checks for the cut through switching it is the opposite of the store and forward switching it is advantageous because it will start forwarding the frame as long as it receives the destination MAC address which is done typically in about 10 microseconds however the cut through switching has the disadvantages because it does not perform any FCS checks and it does not allow the automatic buffering of the frame information and if the information is sent too fast it will be unable to buffer let's recap on the concept of switch the switch consists of many ports and each connector is actually known as a port on the switch each of the port is actually connected via wire to individual devices such as PCs or printers etc. Using this information, let's take a look at the concept of collision domain. The collision domain is actually a concept where devices compete for the chance to communicate. So in general, the collision domain is belonging to all the ports for the case of a hub it is actually consisting of the same collision domain however for a switch each port is a separate collision domain itself so the advantage of a switch over a hub is that it is able to break the segment into smaller collision domains and this will mean less competition among devices taking a look at the following diagram so in this case we have a switch that is connected to five separate networks assuming this network highlighted in red has a lot of traffic so the network traffic is only isolated within this traffic in this network rate for the network in blue and the network in green they are not affected because they are in a separate collision domains so all the other networks are not affected as a result the separate networks will have faster speeds compared to the heavy traffic on the tra network on rate let's take a look at the last concept on broadcast domains the broadcast domain is actually a special domain where you can actually send the frame known as broadcast frame to everybody in the network so the switch in this case will forward the broadcast frames to all the ports in the switch so therefore the switch 
is unable to break the broadcast domains. If you recall what you have learned in the previous chapters, we have the broadcast packet of the IPv4 network. It actually has an IP address such as the network portion followed by the 255 at the back. So the 255, whenever the switch receives a packet, broadcast packet in this manner 255 it will actually forward this frame to all the all the ports on the switch so the ports of the switch in the default configuration belongs to the same broadcast domain if two or more switches are connected broadcasts are forwarded to all ports on all the switches except for the port that originally receives the broadcast so in a simpler explanation the broadcast signal is just like this satellite which will send the broadcast frames to all the devices simultaneously to all the devices in the network this is similar to the satellite signal in the network diagram over here so how do we alleviate or reduce the network congestion in the network we can actually reduce network congestion by doing what we call the segmentation of a LAN into separate collision domains using switches to actually break up the collision domains. You can also provide full duplex communication between devices so that communication is faster. And we can also take advantage of the high port density of the switch so that switches have many ports to allow us to forward to many devices simultaneously. As well as breaking up the collision domains into smaller ones. We can buffer the large frames into smaller separate frames for high speed ports can actually speed up the transmission on the switch switches have very fast internal switching process which will result in what we call a low per port cost of the network so in general for this chapter we have actually learned about the convergence of the information and data such as voice, video, etc. This has been a shift in the way business operates so that now there is no physical offices or buildings restricting the network and communication can happen anytime, anywhere. Switches allows what we call a traditional three-layer hierarchical design and provides modularity, resilience and flexibility. Important for the exam, switch provides store forward cut-through method as well as collision domain and broadcast domains. That's the end of this chapter. Thank you.